Hello, and welcome back to Spiral Knights. Today we will be doing Banaduk. Yeah, that's what's up next. That is, in fact, what we've got on the agenda. Banaduk is the only Tier 3 boss and only Tier 3 boss dungeon. In the past, they have talked about adding another one, but I'm pretty sure that was like a year ago at least. So, you know, it's kind of that ongoing problem of not a lot of new content coming out, but that is okay. Um, let's see, Vanaduke, his place is all undead and fiends, which is you're going to want elemental and piercing damage. You're also really going to want a gun, or else um, you'll have a bad time. Uh, for pretty much all the other bosses, you can get away with only having two weapons, like, fairly easily, having four is pretty much unnecessary. But for Vanaduke having... I guess you can do two um, if you have a group with you. Two weapons will be fine if you have, like, a sword and a gun. You're pretty much good to go. But if you want to do smaller groups of, like, two or by yourself, which I wouldn't recommend doing by yourself, it takes way longer. But um, if you do want to go by yourself, you should probably definitely have four. And if you want to do a group of two, probably at least have three. So, let's see here. We're using slightly different stuff for Vanaduke. Um, we've got the Black Cat Cowl and the Chaos Cloak, which, if you look at the resistances, which are um, at the very top, there's Defense Power and then Status Resist. Both of these have, like, negative Status Resist for um, basically everything. So, they're really technically bad armor, I suppose, but if you check... Um, the black cat cow gives movement speed increase low, so you run around faster, and damage bonus high, and that's to all types of weapons. And then the chaos cloak does charge time reduction medium and damage bonus medium for all types. So they're very powerful, they just have high risk. And then I've got movement speed increase medium from my sprite, which will make me have movement speed increase high. Then the weapons we have are the Volt Edge, the Divine Avenger, Blitz Needle, and Electron Vortex. I would absolutely recommend a Blitz Needle for Vanaduke. Um, every single person in the party should probably have a Blitz Needle if you want to be technically pulling your weight, I guess. Um, otherwise, you'll probably be assigned to water duty in the Vanaduke fight, which is not fun. You just pick up water balls and throw it at the fire, and it's it's not that exciting. So definitely get a Blitz Needle. Um, Bring some elemental weapons. Pretty much uh, the only thing you're going to be using the Blitz Needle against for the most part is um, the fiend type enemies. And the only fiends that are in here are like Trojan horses, which are these. They're like mini bosses in a way. And the Blitz Needle deals with them super well because piercing damage is effective against fiends. And um, it does tons of damage. And they have tons of health, so it, it goes right hand in hand. Um, this is a tier 3 dungeon, so if you look at my, er, yeah, tier 3 dungeon, so 5 star gear is, like, recommended if you want to do, again, solo or groups of 2 or something. Um, and at this point in the game, it actually gets pretty difficult. Um, if I get hit, like that skeleton was just breathing on the ground, if I walked over that, because of my armor, uh, even if I was at full health, I would die. In, I would die over time. It would like set me on fire for like eight seconds, and um, every tick of the fire would do like three of these little health bars. And I think the fire hurts you like once a second, or maybe slightly slower. But yeah, I would totally die if I accidentally bump one of these fire things on the ground. It'll probably kill me in one hit. Um, the only advantage I really have is that. This is depth 24. The deepest depth is 27. And when you start at depth 24 and below, um, you can find Vitapod plus 12, which gives you 12 extra health bars. So at that point, I won't be getting one shot by anything, I don't think. I can at least take one hit. <laughs> okay, so these totems, if, um, and specifically the skeleton guys, if they die inside that little circle, 
they'll be brought back to life. So you have to make sure to fight them outside of the circle. So it's good to move the totems out of the way. Um, that bomb that I have, the Electron Vortex, that's what it does. It doesn't do hardly any damage at all, but it like groups things up really tightly. So that's it's amazing. Um, I feel like everybody should have an Electron Vortex, whether or not you're a bomber or you plan on using bombs. I, I don't bomb at all. I had some bombs and I sold them to the vendor, which is ridiculous. If you sell a 5-star bomb to a vendor, you get 30,000 crowns for it, and it probably costs about 250,000 to get it to that point, but I was just using it so little that it was honestly just taking up inventory space, which you don't have a limited inventory space, but I was like, eh, might as well sell this. So that's how little I bomb, but I use the Electron Vortex every single time I go to Banaduke, so absolutely worth it. To get it though, you do have to do PvP, and you have to do a lot of PvP. Or you could buy one, but if you buy one, it'll be like 10,000 crystal energy, which is like a million crowns. So, it would be very expensive, like literally a million. I, I exaggerate a lot, but that straight up is, yeah, a million crowns. So, if you do, for example, just to give you an idea of how much money you can make in this game, if you do a Vanduke run, you get like about 9,000 crowns. And in a typical party, it's going to take 45 minutes. So that's the kind of money we'll be making. So a million crowns is very significant. Well, I guess technically you get 12,000. Because you get um, usually about 9,000 crowns. It varies from like anywhere from like 8.5. Actually, from like it varies anywhere from like 8,000 to 10,000 crowns themselves. And then you get, um, when you beat the boss, you get some boss tokens, and you can get anywhere from three to four of those. If you do the entire dungeon, you'll get either three or four, and each one of those essentially translates to being worth 1,000 each. So all in all, I guess the range is like 11,000 to 14,000. Okay, also I switched up my shield to the Swift Strike Buckler which is that tiny little yellow circle on my arm there. Um, it caps out at a three-star shield, so it's only tier two. Um, but it gives attack speed increase high to all weapon types. Um, having either like Black Cat Hood and Chaos Armor or full Chaos Set and the Swift Strike Buckler is really common at higher levels. Um, pretty much you have to play the game where you just don't get hit very much, because my shield will break in one hit. And then I won't be able to block for like, like maybe five seconds or something. And also, if your shield breaks, any of the damage that wasn't blocked by the shield you still take. So, if your shield breaks you still get hurt. You get hurt by the hit that broke your shield. So It's really not that great. Well, as a shield it's terrible. It's worse than the... Um, Oh gosh, Barber's Thorn Shield. It's worse than that, but it gives attack speed increase high to all weapon types. So that's why people use it. Oh jeez, we use health capsule. Cause I'm gonna burn to death. So I'm getting harassed by this jelly cube while I'm trying to fight some flamethrower turrets. All right, so these are Trojan horses. They're only vulnerable on this crystal on their back. So you have to like lure them into attacking you, and then have to shoot them in the back. This guy is really not wanting to swing his sword. Wow. Hit me in my face. Hit me in my ugly face. There we go. There we go, buddy. And Vanaduke is... Um longer than the rest of the other boss arenas. If we go to that ever so useful party map, or gate map, we got one, two, three, four levels, and then the boss. So it's actually significantly longer because the other ones are two levels and then a boss, so it's got a whole bonus extra two levels. But that's also why you make so much money from this place. But that's also why it takes forever. This is probably going to be like an hour long video.
Okay, there we go. See, I got a Vitapod 12, so now I have, like, almost double. Not quite double health, but pretty close. Vitapod drops are pretty consistent, but at the same time they are random, so usually, generally you'll have one by either the end of the first stage or like the middle of the second stage. Um, I have had runs where I've gone the entire time without finding it, but that was like, you know, maybe one or two out of hundreds, so it's really uncommon, but you can be like on the third stage and still not have a Vitapod. If that happens, and you're using all Chaos and a Swift Strike Buckler, then you can probably just count on a few deaths. Because you're going to get lit on fire at some point. There's so much fire in this stage. There's like fire traps everywhere. All the enemies are fire. It's all very fire-themed and fire-centric. And I'm not sure why, but the load screens are taking significantly longer than normal today like when i go to start a new level or something it'll like black screen for a while and then it will start the load screen which is typically not the case so i might not talk on the load screens unless i have something really imp like useful that just popped to mind and then i can just edit them out so we might do that or we might not i guess we'll have to see okay this is level two this guy told us that there are eight sprites trapped in this area. Um, and we have to rescue at least six of them. I'm going to do all eight just so you can see the different rooms. So we'll just do this clockwise, I guess. Most people usually run off to the right and do the right side first because if you go to the right side and then the bottom right room is just like a big huge combat arena and people like that one the most so usually if you're in a group you'll see people just run off to that side first so if you just go off to the left that makes you a good team player all right another reason why sarah Finks is overpowered is if you use their third ability which is this aura it protects you from all damage including trap damage so you can walk over traps and stuff without getting hurt at all um and, for example, when you're carrying these guys, if you step on the trap, you'll drop it. And if you have to step back on the trap to pick it up, you'll take damage and drop it. So you can't walk over traps while carrying those guys. So, um, Seraphinx also helps you save a lot of time by being able to walk over traps while carrying these guys. But I got impatient I used it while running down there. But, whatever. So that's a another great benefit of Seraphinx. Okay, yeah, that's the first room. It's pretty straightforward. You just have to make your way down, like avoid fire and traps, kill three dudes, and then you got the sprite. Those are the sprites. You have to put them, um, put them in that little green patch out in the front room to rescue them. All right, so this room spawns a bunch of skeletons and a trojan, and then like there's these totems everywhere. So you can't if you kill the skeletons, they'll just demonstrate. If you kill on the skeletons, then they'll just their head will fly in the ground, and then whenever like totems pulsate, that revives any of the skeletons that are laying in the ground. So if you get back in here after killing the Trojan, when you kill the Trojan, it'll drop this gate and this gate. Up until then, those parts of the ground are gated off, and then you can um, move one of the totems kind of out of the way and give yourself some space to work. Alternatively, you can just smack the skeletons like into the very corner, like this section right here would not have had yeah, like it wouldn't have been covered by the totem's aura so you could just smack all the skeletons into that corner and kill them kind of like I'm doing now or exactly like I'm doing now so that's a couple of the strategies for that area. moving along we have this side's combat arena Just a whole bunch of stuff spawns in. We have a Trojan and two Skeletons. Trojan, two Skeletons, and three Jellies. I like to just drop a bomb here. And then hit it with the Seraphinx defense down. And then smack the Jellies. Oh my gosh. So this game does lag quite a bit naturally. And then also recording makes it lag slightly more. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, from time to time... 
things are just going to get really choppy. But that's kind of something you have to agree to when you decide to play this game. Like, there's going to be issues from time to time. And you can say I only have two bars of connection out of four. Which, that really just varies for me between two and three. Pretty much always has. So I guess it's just kind of an unlucky day. But whatever. We're going to make it work. So the Trojan has three attacks. He's got that sword slam. He has his charge attack. Um, if you're at the maximum range away from him when he uses his charge attack, like he'll run across the ground, um, he'll follow up with a sword slam. So one good way to trick him into trying to hit you with the sword is just standing at a distance until you see him do the charge. And then when he lands in front of you, just circle around behind him. Um, and then his final attack is just an area of effect, like explosion buff, and he just he buffs his attack damage, and also if you're right next to him, he'll take damage and potentially get shocked, which is really rough. If you're trying to fight, like, a bunch of enemies and you get shocked, you're you're gonna get walloped. Pretty hard! And in this room, um, it's just like, you hit that button, opens this gate, hit that button, opens this gate, hit that button, opens this gate. So I usually try to go in and kill the flamethrower guys first. Pretty much in this game, I like to do whatever I can to kill any ranged enemies as fast as I can, and healers. Healers and ranged enemies are kind of the worst. Um, this game can quickly turn into a bullet hell shooter if you don't really manage that. Oh, and every time you um, collect one of these sprites, it spawns some skeletons out in the main area. We're just going to ignore them for now. And rescue some of these sprites. And I only need to grab, well, I guess I could have grabbed as few as two, but I'll just go with three. Three from both sides, why not? Keep it nice and symmetrical for everybody. All right, so now we're off to the right side, which most people do first. It really doesn't matter. Um, just whichever, like, basically you can take whatever rooms you prefer. This room isn't too complicated. You hit the switch when the fire's down, cross over, a bunch of skeletons pop up everywhere. And my game is going crazy laggy right now, for whatever reason. I mean, usually when this happens, it, like, fixes itself after a moment, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so then there's those skeletons and then a Trojan blocked off by a wall of bricks, and he has two healers with him. If you have a Blitz Needle, just wait for the Trojan to swing, and then target the healers with a charged up Blitz Needle attack, and you can break through the blocks and kill the healers, kind of like I did there. Okay, sweet. The game has fixed itself. And then you just come back over here and you got a few skeletons to deal with. It's like five. So a combo, yeah. That's the combo I really like. Why I think that Seraphinx is one of the strongest attack enemies as well. Or attack sprites. Like, just as good as Dracon because if you have an, L, um, an Electron Vortex, you can group up a bunch of skeletons like that, and then hit them with that, and then all their defense is lowered like, very significantly. So, it makes Seraphinx very powerful, and you can see it's already off of cooldown. Okay, this is everybody's favorite room. It's just a big old sausage fest, I suppose. You just hit the switch, and then there's this constantly rotating bar of bullets, and then a bundle of skeletons, just a ton of them. But, I don't know, I guess... I'm not sure if this room is, like... People don't like the traps and stuff in the other rooms, or people just like fighting a bunch of stuff in this room, or if they think they get more money or something. I don't know. If a teammate kills an enemy, the enemy will drop money for you as well, so you don't have to worry about someone else taking money from you. Um, additionally, those crystals at the end of matches, like... Um, that you find... Well, the crystals that you find, you can only carry one at a time, and then... They get turned in at the elevator when you go down to the next level. Um, those are also shared, so if your teammate has a giant crystal that you want, it's okay. You'll still get those crystals. That was close. He was doing his like, charge attack buff thing, so even though I was behind him, I was about to get exploded.
while carrying sprites, it's good to face backwards in case you take damage. Um, when you take damage, you just set it down. And so if you're facing forward and carrying it, you'll set it down right in front of you, and then you'll trip all over it and stuff. So if you're facing backwards, you'll if you take damage, you'll just set it down behind you, and then it won't mess you up at all. Okay, this is everybody's least favorite room. It's the rocket puppy room. That is a rocket puppy, um, which people really hate. At tier 3, um, rocket puppies are ridiculously overpowered. They shoot rockets that fly around for like... I don't know, probably six seconds or something. They have like the tightest turn radius of all time. Massive explosion radius. They set you on fire. They do tons of damage. And um, it's it's pretty relentless. And the puppy will just not stop firing rockets at you until it's dead. But as you can see, it's at a distance. Also, rocket puppies are constructs. So they're resistant to piercing damage, which is the blitz needle. And most people only bring a blitz needle to this area. So you can't really fight it that well. Um, so people hate this room because they die a lot, but a good trick for it, and we'll see if I mess this up, there's a good chance I might, because the pressure of YouTube, I suppose. If you dash right as you walk in front of it, it won't register you as being there, and it just won't fire at you, so here we go. Hey, even though I lagged, I successed. So yeah, you just dash kind of right before you get into its field of view, and then, um, I guess, I don't know if the way the game calculates your invincibility frames while dashing is you're just essentially not there, but um, sometimes if you're in a party and you're attacking an enemy and the enemy like is focused on you, um, the way it changes aggro is whoever's done the most amount of damage, it'll switch to that person. So if you're attacking someone and you've done the most damage, then someone else comes in and does more damage, it'll switch to them. And sometimes if like you're in a group of people fighting a big enemy and it's focused on you and as somebody else is hitting it you dash it'll automatically switch aggro to them because you kind of quote don't exist anymore so that's another strange side effect that dashing can have um this room there was a bunch of those blocks and then a ghost block up top and that's how you unlock all these like those cages, I guess, that the skeletons were in, basically. If you walk up past the middle of the room, a bunch more enemies and a Trojan will spawn in. So if you stand at a distance and clear the blocks with a gun, like I did, then you can fight the first wave and then walk up here. And then this is more manageable. If you had all those enemies to deal with, plus two more skeletons and a Trojan, I could get really bad really quick. While you're dashing, there is a period of time when you're completely invincible. It's like even if you dash and then a Trojan slams you with a sword, you won't take any damage. Um, the game does have slight... well, like there's a delay on everything basically. Um, like on my screen, when I do something isn't technically when the game servers register me doing that thing. It's not the same moment. So if I dash at the very instant I'm about to take damage, I'll still take the damage because from the game server point of view, I didn't dash until like maybe a quarter second later or something. So just keep that in mind. If you want to avoid damage with dashing, you have to dash just slightly before you get hit. Alright, and so now we have a million skeletons and we have a sweet vortex bomb. So I think you know how this is going to go. We're just going to clump these guys up and maybe hit them with a charge attack or maybe just keep clumping them up until they die. Who knows? Yeah, that's a nice charge deck. Oh my gosh! Oh, the lag! Things are getting dangerous. This game is also really heavy with particle effects, so it can be hard to tell what is going on a lot of times. Like, I don't particularly like fighting things on this patch of green ground, because I can't hardly see anything. Um... Another thing a lot of people don't know, if you're on fire, and then you, like if I'm standing over here in the middle of the room and this zombie lights me on fire, if you run onto this green patch, it will set you, or like extinguish the flames, so that's nice. If you're standing on the patch when you're lit on fire, though, you have to run off the patch and then run back onto the patch to get rid of the fire. But if you're in this room and you're on fire, just go onto the green patch, everything will be okay. Okay, 
can see our connection just went up to three bars. There might not even be a noticeable difference. But, who knows. Extra bars can't be bad, right? Okay, and then these are little blobs of water that you get for rescuing those six guys. You can use it to throw and take out these otherwise unextinguishable fire blobs on the ground. And um, also, if you're on fire and you stand next to a wall, like if I was on fire and I stood right here and threw the water ball against the wall, it would extinguish me. Or if a teammate threw a water ball and I was standing next to a wall, um, it would extinguish me. You basically just have to make the water um, like hit something. The water won't collide with your character, but it will collide with walls and enemies. So if you're standing next to an enemy or a wall, you can use it to extinguish yourself. Or if you have cool teammates who really care about your feelings, and they're paying attention to who is and isn't on fire, they can extinguish you. And since pretty much everybody uses chaos armor these days, since it's so overpowered... Whoa. I almost ran straight into that floor fire. Everybody uses chaos because it's so useful and overpowered, but it does have that massive weakness to fire damage, so it's kind of a good thing to know if your teammate's about to die and they're going to be on fire for another five seconds and you're standing right next to the water pod, maybe just chuck a little love their way. That's the second stage. Um, it's probably why I would recommend bringing at least one other person to Vanaduke, because uh, it's twice as fast if you have somebody else. It takes a long, long time by yourself, but it's much better in a group. The fastest I've ever been able to complete Vanaduke while still like making a decent amount of money is like 20 minutes, I believe. It was me, my bomber friend Havo, and this other player named Akini, who's like one of the best players I've ever known. So we had like a really good group going. And Akini was like really hardcore. She pretty much loved to speed run this stuff. We'd skip a ton of the areas that didn't give a lot of money. And uh, we definitely just played it differently. Like her set of rules for farming Vanaduke is way more efficient, but like way more stressful. You have to really focus and just be going all the time, which was okay because I mean, I was with like my internet friend, Michael, who is Havo, and then, um, and, and she was pretty cool too. So, I mean, it was fun because I was still with a group of people, but if I was doing that by myself, I think I would go crazy because it's like, this game is pretty relaxing to me. And that kind of takes any of the relaxation out because you're just like stressing, like, I gotta go as fast as I can. Ah. But my goodness, was it good money? It was such good money. Holy moly. We were making like $150,000 a day. Yeah, this room is just a big old fight with a huge spike trap in the middle. I'm on fire. Huge old spike trap. And there's basically no gimmicks to it, just kill all the dudes. Don't step on the spikes. If you don't have a Vitapod by this point, which is kind of rare but not super uncommon, you're very likely to get one here. Pretty much if you don't have one after this point, then you can count yourself incredibly unlucky. And I'm not sure if it is the case, but I think it could be that Seraphinx's heart attack, the ability that makes enemies drop more hearts, also increases the chance for capsule drops, these health capsules, and um, Vitapods. I'm really unsure. It seems like that's been happening, but that might just be a placebo effect or something. Or it might just be random chance. I really am not sure. Oh, I'm on fire. When did I get caught on fire? Hmm. Okay, so every level you get one emergency revive, which is basically a free death. After that, it takes sparks of life, which are an item you can find in treasure chests, and you get some from missions. But after you've completed the missions, you can't get more. So, like, I've done all the missions, so at this point I can only get them from boxes. In today's day and age, they're really rare. Like, really, really rare. But when they first introduced Sparks of Life, they were super common. Like, you'd probably get three or four every single time you did a Vanaduke run. 
Now you get one, maybe every four or five bandicoot runs, so it's really been turned on its head. Um, but I think I have like close to 300 of them stockpiled up. Uh, yeah, I have 271. So, in a level, you can die once for free, and then after that if you die, every time you die in that level you have to use the spark of life to come back to life. But luckily I still have 271 of them, so I'm pretty much sitting pretty for quite some time. I don't use them super often, except for in Shadow Lairs, which I rarely ever do, because it takes more money to get into them than you actually get from them, but they're really fun. But, like, if you're trying to make money, they're absolutely inefficient. It's technically just a huge waste of time and money, but they're incredibly fun, and you can get very powerful armors from them, like the armor I used in my other episodes. Um, was Snarbalax armor, and you get that from a Shadow Lair, but that was the only one I wanted, was the Snarbalax set, and since I already have it, I don't need to do more Shadow Lairs. But, I will be doing Shadow Lairs for these videos, and I probably will not be soloing them, because they're very difficult. They're the unofficial Tier 4. Um, like, the tiers are kind of marked by depth. Um, the depth of the clockworks. Right now we're at depth 26 um, out of 27. Depth 28 does exist, but it, there's no enemies in it ever, and it's always just a hub world. It's always the same. It just sends you back to the haven. Okay, quick tip for these fire boxes. If you stand like right in the corner of them, you can actually reach the statue without putting that fire out. What you're supposed to do is grab a water ball and then throw it over there, but you can save yourself some time if you train yourself to do that trick. Anyways, Shadow Layers take place from depth 24 through depth 27, which is the same depths as these, so it's technically tier 3, but it's much, much more difficult, and um, kind of another way to think about tiers is what Vitapods are available. Like, during the Snarblax video, I think the highest Vitapod we found was either 3 or 4, and now we find, you know, 12. We can get up to level 18, Vitapod. So, um, that's kind of another way to measure the tiers, and in Shadow Lairs you can get up to a Vitapod 24, I believe. So, yeah. Shadow Lairs are, I guess, technically tier 3, but it's like the unofficial tier 4, like I said several times, I believe. Just repeat myself. Okay, so this room, you can hit the buttons one at a time, and every time you do it, just spawns skeletons on either side of you. But it's faster and more chaotic and laggy and great. Just do it all at once. Oh wait, I already died once in this place. I don't want to use a spark alive. I normally do this because I usually haven't died by this point, and so I don't really care if I die once, because your first death's free. That's how they get you hooked on it. They get you addicted to death keep coming back and they charge you after that. Oh gosh. So, normally I get killed in this room just because I'm impatient. But now I don't want to die in this room because I don't want to use the spark alive because they're so rare these days. And yeah, I have 271, but I would really like to break 300 just for my own mental happiness, I suppose. Like, aha, 300, that's a better number than 271. And for the most part, you'll probably see me using my um, Volt Edge, because it is higher DPS against single targets, but in big situations like that is where the Divine Avenger really shines, because of all the knockback it deals in such a wide range, you can really manage crowds with it, you can like hit away huge groups of enemies, try to keep yourself safe so that you can later waste that health on a spike trap. Okay, this section is just... You hit that party button, and then a bunch of enemies, like, five at a time spawn, and there's, like, maybe six or seven waves, I don't know, maybe six, maybe five, who knows. Um, some people like to stand down below the spikes. It's, you should definitely be a team player and come up top. This is where they all spawn, and you'll get through it about four times quicker if everybody just comes up to the top. You don't even have to do anything, just come up to the top and hang out. Um... Also, people sometimes like to use charge attacks. I'll show you, for example, the Divine Adventure charge attack does ridiculous amounts of knockback. Like, if we have all these people right here, 
and I hit this guy, they're all going to get flung to the wall. Yeah, all the way up to the wall. So that wasn't even the maximum amount it can knock them back. But a lot of people will use the Divine Avenger charge attack and hit the enemies down towards the spikes, which will send them all flying down to like this section on the map. And then that means you have to either wait for the skeletons to slowly shamble. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. All the way up from down there, or you have to run back down over the spikes, and it's a huge waste of time. Please do not do it. The Divine Avenger charge attack just is not a good source of, like, fast damage. It definitely has good use, but if you're trying to kill huge groups of enemies like that, just don't use it. Because it's a really slow form of dealing damage. And also, if you must use it, please hit them towards the walls, don't hit them down. It makes me sad every time I see it. And I always say something, but it never works. And I know it's not going to work, but I can't stop myself from being like, please don't charge attack them down. But hey, what can you do? I don't know if you saw on that prize wheel, there's like a little iguana looking thing. Um, everybody really wants to get it all the time because nobody ever gets it, but it's actually... Like, a, technically, it's a lose. Like, you don't get anything. It's just nothing. And I've never gotten it. But every time I see it, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll get it this time. And everybody thinks it's super rare, but it's it's actually the worst. <laughs> Which I think is kind of funny. That I mean, it's funny that they even put it in there. Because it is so rare to get it. Like, I had to look up on the wiki what it was. And so, if getting nothing is that rare, everybody's like... I really want to know what that is, because the wheel also spins too fast to read what the things say. And there's no item, I mean there's an enemy type that looks like that, but there's no item that looks like that, so everybody's like, what is that thing? Alright, so normally this ball is completely surrounded by fire, and you have to bring another ball across the spikes, but if you saw, I threw a water ball, like, up at the start, and you can extinguish the fire around the ball, so you don't have to bring another one across the spikes. And if you get hit while you're on the spikes, you drop it. And then, also, there's this crate surrounded by fire up in this wall. If you hit it, or if you unlock it, then there's a button, and you hit the button, and it does nothing for now. But it is a secret later. Okay, then here you just have a bunch of gun puppies, or flamethrower puppies, and then rocks. Um, after you walk forward a certain distance, a Trojan spawns in behind you. So if you're with a group of people, you'll usually have one person go up and unlock all the blocks and then one or two people will stay back to kill the Trojan because it spawns in facing up every time. So they'll have a person just stand here with a blitz needle charge and shoot him straight in the back. If you're doing it by yourself, just don't forget to go back down. Um, then after that, you just go up here and now all the flamethrower puppies are unlocked. Weirdly enough, these flamethrower puppies have really incredibly lower defense. If you saw, that charge attack just hit like over a thousand. Um, I do have an attack increase thing that drops and I picked up, but let's see. Well, okay. Let's see what I hit on this gun puppy. 910 on the charge attack. If I go and hit one of these skeletons, it does 790. So for whatever reason, they just decided to make those a lot weaker. Okay, and then there's boxes behind all of the gun puppies, and um, underneath two of them are buttons that open a gate up ahead of you, and um, if you, as you go up towards all of them, it will spawn in two skeletons. So it's good to spawn in all the skeletons just so you can kill them and get as much money as possible. Especially when you have an electron vortex, you can group them up so tightly, you can kill them really quick great way to make fast money. This next spot spawns in a bunch of skeletons and some jellies, and also a totem. So you need to make sure to have one person grab the totem before you fight the skeletons, otherwise they'll all just come back to life. And if you kill a skeleton and then it comes back to life, and you kill it again, it won't drop more money or anything, it's just a waste of time. So you can't just like infinitely farm skeletons. It won't even drop more hearts. They'll just drop nothing. Every single time. Now 
So I was at full health before I got hit by that fire. And if you watch, my health is like over half gone. Okay, then um, two more totems just spawned in. So just make sure to clear those out. Bring them down towards the bottom. Make your way through the crowd. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, we're in a bad spot. These skeletons can glitch when they breathe fire, and they can breathe fire forever until they hit you, or until you hit them, or if you back off an insane distance. But sometimes, if you're like near them, um, they will just continue to breathe fire right where they're breathing it forever. So be careful of that. I don't know why, and they've never fixed it in like three years. Oh my gosh, oh the lag. After you kill all these skeletons, two Trojans spawn in up top with their backs against the wall, which makes it fairly difficult to get to them. Uh oh. Oh yeah, they also spawn in a bunch of wolvers, which is kind of a dirty move. Wolvers are beasts, which are resistant to elemental, and like everything else in here is weak to elemental. So, you, like, the only swords I bring are elemental, and then the bomb I bring is elemental. And then wolvers um, dodge guns. They like dig underground and like teleport around and stuff if you try to shoot them. Like that one just dug and then appeared behind me. So, trying to kill them with guns is very annoying. I usually just hit them into a corner and then beat them with swords. A lot of people like to try to shoot them with the blitz needle, but they just dig around and it takes forever. You just dodge their attack and then hit them into a corner, and you can just sit there and like wail on them with a brandish of any kind, you'll kill them faster than anything. Well, probably faster than any other option you have at Mana Duke. Okay, this section is kind of a maze. Well, it's not really a maze, it's just like a... like, three here, three here, three here. But, um... There are these wheel launchers blocking your path, and like, fire blocking your path and stuff. Um, but there is like sort of an exploit where if you charge up a brandish and then use the charge attack along the left side of the wheel launcher uh, the explosions well the, the wheel launchers are guarded in the front you're not supposed to be able to damage them and you can only hurt them from behind but the explosions from the brandish will go off and the explosions will kind of go along its side and then up behind its back and so you can actually blow it up with that charge attack or if you have a gun um, as long as you're not using auto-targeting. If you use auto-targeting, it'll aim straight at the front of the wheel launcher. But if you don't have auto-targeting turned on, which you probably shouldn't, um, then you can just shoot right along the side, and when the bullet reaches its um, maximum distance, it kind of pops, like it explodes, like it hits something. And so if you shoot it really close to the side of the wheel launcher, it'll pop and um, actually deal damage. If you don't have either of those weapons, um, Probably just wait for somebody in your group to get those out of the way for you. And then there's, on this side right here, yeah, on this little island um, on the map that I'm pointing to with the cursor, and then on this little island, there are sets of four skeletons that appear. But there's also wheel launchers above both sets. If you don't kill the wheel launchers before you spawn the skeletons, um, they'll just get, like, knocked down all the way to the bottom of the area, and they can actually get knocked out of bounds out of the map, and then make it impossible. They can still hurt you, and you can still kill them with guns that you can shoot, like, off the edge, but you can't pick up the money, so kind of wasteful. So if you do want to kill the skeletons, which I usually do just because, you know, that whole issue I've got where I can't leave any stone unturned and all that stuff, and I just try to get as much money as I can from each run. Uh, then definitely make sure to kill the wheel launchers before you go down to attack them. And then they pop up, and then we suck them in, and then we destroy them all. And that's the dream combo. Alrighty, 
so we just gotta grab this statue. The statue can appear either on this side or on the other side, behind those other wheel launchers where I got this yellow crystal. Um, it's just random. It's usually better if it appears on this side because you can get it faster. But um, this is the last room before the boss fight. Um, as you can see, there's a ton of traps in here. Right as you step on the platform, this Trojan spawns in. So it's best to step on the platform when the spikes are down, and then you can have somebody come over here and take him out quickly. It is possible to get unlucky and have him like do a charge attack down towards your whole group on the button, and then he'll be standing like on the spikes and on the fire and stuff, and it's really hard to get behind him to use the Blitz Needle charge attack. But that doesn't happen too often if the people who go up to attack him handle it properly, and if you step on the button at the right time. And after you kill all these skeletons, um, like, after you kill the Trojan, it spawns in skeletons. It spawns in a ton over here and, like, three over here. And after you kill that full wave, it spawns in another Trojan and a ton of skeletons over here and, like, three over there. Okay, charged. Um, which complicates things. You can stand off, like, stand right behind him and then kind of aim past him off to the side and then your bullets will graze the little crystal on his back as they go by. You'll only hit him with like maybe half or a third of the bullets and if you're doing probably even more than two people and you don't have maximum gun damage, I do because of, owie, owie. I have maximum gun damage because of like my armor and stuff, the same stuff that's getting me killed by all this fire. Um, if you have maximum gun damage, you can probably still one-shot the Trojan from the side like that with two people. If you have more than two, you need to get like all the bullets directly on him in order to kill him. So the grazing side shot is kind of just when you don't have the opportunity to get a perfect hit off. Um, you can still deal a good amount of damage to him, and probably two of them will kill him reliably. Or, you know, if you can just set it up perfectly and get straight behind him. And you're gold. Yeah. Actually, accidentally did an extra shot there I didn't want to do. Oh, free. Oh, we're, we're in trouble. Well, free revive, take me there. Oh my gosh, no. They've boxed us in. We have to break our way through this wall. Um, Trojans are very resistant to knockback. You basically can't knock them back. If they trap you in a wall, like if they get you in a corner, then you're basically dead. Um, there are a few shields in the game that will allow you to shield bump them away from you. It's like the biggest shield still. Um, there's an event called March of the Torto Drones that they break out every March, which I actually just missed. Um, but you can get some huge shields from that. Some massive turtle shields. I have one. It's actually really cool. Um, I'll probably be using it a little bit later. But if you have one of those, when you put up a shield, if enemies are right next to you, you'll shield bump them. And depending on, I guess, the heaviness of your shield, which is sort of just like a unrated stat that you kind of just figure out based on what makes sense, like big, huge, heavy shields that are visually big and huge and heavy knock stuff back more. So, uh, anyways, I have the Swift Strike Buckler, which is only tier 3, and it's tiny, so it really does not do much knockback, or shield bump, or whatever. So, if I get locked in the corner by a Trojan, I'm basically dead. Um, the only ways you can really survive it are probably if you have, if you don't have a big heavy shield, like, the only way for me to survive that would probably be, um, to spam my Divine Avenger, and try to wiggle, like, just bump him back slowly, make little amounts of room. Um, and then when he goes to attack, I just have to dash at the right time so that I'm invincible at the point when he hits me. Um, and also the Blitz Needle. Interestingly enough, the basic attack for the Blitz Needle, right when, if you shoot it straight in a Trojan's face, specifically a Trojan, they'll get bumped backwards a little bit when they block it. So if you just do, um, like, basic attack and then shield, and then basic attack and then shield and then basic attack, and then shield. It can slowly bump him back. It's not very reliable, you're probably gonna die. 
Like, <laughs> if you're trapped by a Trojan and you get out of it like one out of five times, you're probably doing pretty good. So don't worry about it too much if it happens. It's just frustrating, but there's not a lot you can do. Okay, this is Vanaduke. This is actually a really fun fight. He doesn't have nasty periods of invincibility. So... He's better than, like, the Snarblacks in that regard, in my opinion. He spawns in a bunch of skeletons. Um, there are technically five rounds. There's this stage, which is him trying to smash you with a cudgel, I think is what that... Like, cudgel? C-U-D-G-E-L. Is what that thing's called, I guess. Um, it's like a mace. So yeah, there's this. And then there's the mask stage. During the first two stages... Or, so I guess... It goes stage one, which is this. Then a mask stage, which is happening right now, actually. Then stage three, and stage three spawns more skeletons than a mask stage. Then stage five, he summons much more difficult enemies. Okay, so Vanaduke's mask stage, how this works, he's got these two huge bullets flying around him, and he spawns a bunch of little bullets, and his mask is invincible until you hit it with a ball of water. Um, for stage one, the technique to hit it with a ball of water is to throw it diagonally, because he shoots out um, the bullets in a plus pattern. So pretty much straight, like, from the diagonals is very vulnerable. That's probably the best way to hit the mask. Um, I said at the beginning of the video, if you don't have a blitz needle, you'll probably be put on water duty, which is um, includes watering... If you throw water at those fireballs around Vanity, oh, I didn't want to do that. Um, they'll disappear. Whoa! And then also this fire on the ground, you can water and it will disappear. And then also the mask, you can water. So if you don't have a blitz needle, your job will just be throwing water at all that stuff. Jeez. And we are already out. Oh my gosh. Ran into that. Okay, we're doing really badly. I generally do not take this much damage. So we're gonna have to probably focus up a little bit and hope for some good luck. Cause if I get if I get hit by his thing, it does almost all my health, and it stuns me, and it sets me on fire. And if you're stunned, you walk around and use items and everything really slowly. So if he hits me, um, I'm basically just gonna burn to death before I can do anything about it. So one hit from his mace and I'm dead. Or if I get set on fire that's going to do a big old chunk of my health. Okay, so here he sets, he shoots his bullets in like an alternating X pattern. Like a plus and then an X, and then a plus and then an X. And I find the best way to hit his mask, even at a like really long range, is to wait for um, these big huge balls to circle in front of you, and as soon as they do, just throw it straight up at the mask. So throw it straight up, and I hit it from a massive distance. This stage can give people a good bit of trouble that one, but we just beat it. Okay, um, this is stage five. He summons much tougher minions. They're called, like, Almerian Royal Guards. If you stand in the right spot, you can get behind them. They're like, um, Trojans in the fact that they have shields, and you can only hurt them from behind. But if you stand in the right spot, you can start out, like, right as soon as one spawns, you can kill it. If you're in a group, you can have, you usually will have people, like, two people will kill them, so they'll be gone. If you're solo, you can only take out one, obviously. Well, then the other one you have to try to manage. Um, the only attack they have is like a charge attack. So you have to wait for them to charge at you so you can see their back. And you have to wait for Vanaduke to be in a position where while you're using the Blitz Needle attack, he won't hammer you to death. Which can be pretty difficult to get the timing. To have that all line up. Um, it's more reliable, generally, just to avoid him. Just like try to let let him charge, then let Vanaduke do an attack, and then shoot Vanaduke, and then kind of just wander around, make sure not to walk into the fire, make sure not to get by Vanaduke's fireballs. There is a maximum amount of fire tiles that could be on the ground at a time, um, and we've actually reached that maximum. So now, when he slams the ground, more fire will not fall down unless I extinguish some. But I'm not going to. 
because like the number one, actually I'm gonna extinguish some, extinguish this one, because I think it's gonna hit me. Um, pretty much the number one way to take damage in Vandic fights when you know what you're doing is he'll hit the ground like that, and then fire will just randomly fall on you. Um, it usually falls in little groups of three, and it is possible to get like stuck in a triangle of fire. Like three triangle, like fire will just fall, say, right here next to me, right here, and like right here, and I'll just be trapped in it, and I'll die, and there's nothing I can do. Um, so that's probably one of the riskiest things for fighting Bandicoot when you know what you're doing. So it's almost better, like in that case, except for those three pieces against the wall that I extinguished, like all of the fire was in the upper right. So if I just fought him anywhere else on the stage, I wouldn't ever have to worry about fire, which is great. Um, if you have a water person, they're pretty much always going to extinguish that fire. And um, they're not going to keep all the fire off the map but they're also going to keep enough off the map that more can fall on you. So at stage 5, a water person is pretty much unhelpful, but if you tell them, like, hey, stop watering the fire, they're not going to listen. Um, so that's just something you're going to have to be aware of. But, yeah, that is the entirety of Vanaduke. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was informative or entertaining. And um, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video, which might be the danger missions. So, see you then. Thanks for watching.